Lisa for having us here today and thank you for coming to the presentation to learn more about Beacon of Life and what we do. My name is Michelle Buteri. I'm the Director of Marketing and Enrollment over at Beacon of Life. And have you ever heard of Beacon of Life or heard a little bit about Beacon of Life? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm here then. <laughs> so have you ever heard of a PACE program? No. Okay, so good. Beacon of Life is the PACE program of Monmouth County. And we also have a center in Ocean County. But here today we're gonna to be talking about our Monmouth County location. Um, so PACE, it stands for Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. So our program truly is that it's all-inclusive, it's a preventative program, and our goal is to keep seniors 55 and older that live in Monmouth County living safely in the community with our services for as long as possible. That way we can eliminate the need for institutional care, reduce hospitalizations, and any, you know, take over any medical issues you might have and provide services to you depending on what your needs are. So it's a, it's a program covered by Medicare and Medicaid. Medicaid covers the program at 100%, and people otherwise that would qualify for a nursing home or assisted living could potentially be a candidate for Beacon of Life. So it's actually a nationwide program. There are 147 PACE organizations nationally. In New Jersey, there are seven PACE programs. So Beacon of Life, we have one in Monmouth and one in Ocean County. So our service area is all of Monmouth County. Uh, we've been open since 2016. We currently have 225 participants and we're constantly growing because there's such a need in Monmouth County to service our seniors where they're living because that really is where people do their best is at home. So we did recently become part of the Bold Age Network. So Bold Age is like our corporate company that oversees us and they're opening other states and all over the place. So we're just continuing to grow to service the seniors that really need us. So to qualify for PACE, you need to be 55 and older, live in the service area. So for us, it's Monmouth County be able to live safely in the community with PACE services, and you have to meet the nursing home level of care. So we do have a nurse that goes out and she will do an assessment to see if you qualify for our program. So nursing home level of care in New Jersey, you need to have, you need to need assistance with three or more activities of daily living. So that could include like showering, going to the toileting, transfers, getting around, how are people doing at home, what do they need help with? Um, so our service area, like I said, is all of Monmouth County. Our center is right over in Oceanport on Fort Monmouth. So we have a beautiful center. It used to be the Patterson Hospital. So if you're familiar with that, that's our center now. So these are some of the services we have. We like to say it's a one-stop shop. So. The way that we keep seniors living at home is providing all these different services to them. So we have transportation to and from our center and to any medical appointments. We have a beautiful day center where you could come for your activities, socialization, get breakfast and lunch while you're there. We also have aides in the center to assist with any personal care while our participants are in the center. We have dietitians on staff. We have physical and occupational therapy on site as well. Uh, we have home health aides, we have social workers to help with any community needs that somebody might have. If they have problems paying their bills or uh, maybe we can set them up with food stamps or a cell phone, whatever they need, they'll get it from us. We also would take over all of their primary care. So when somebody enrolls with us, we are their sole service provider, meaning they will see our doctor and stay within our network of doctors. So by doing that and having all these different people taking care of them within one network, we're able to see exactly what they need because we're all coming from one place that everyone is coming. I'll take questions at the end, if that's okay. Um, so we do have specialists that come to our center as well. We have a cardiologist, a podiatrist, an eye doctor, a dentist that all come to our center. Or if you need an appointment to an outside doctor, we do all the care coordination. So our clinics say they come in and see our doctor. The doctor says, I want you to go see a pulmonologist. 
then we will do the care coordination, set up that appointment for them, set up the transportation, and make sure they get to and from those appointments, and just make sure that we're communicating with those doctors too of what the findings were. We also become someone's pharmacy, so any medications that somebody might need, I know we were talking earlier about how that's a big problem with seniors is their medications. They may choose to take certain medications because they can only afford those medications for the month, or they might not be able to refill their medications or get them in a timely manner. We do all of that medication management for the people that need it, and we also deliver the medications to them or they can come get them at the center. Um, our home care services, we have home care aides that will go out into the home and help with uh, laundry, like housekeeping, getting dressed in the morning, showers, it's needs-based, so, and it's task-oriented, meaning our aide will go out and they're there until the job is done. So they're there for a specific task, and then our aide is helping with that task, and then they're moving on to our next participant, helping them with what they need. So it's a really well-oiled machine, our home care. I know that's one of the biggest problems that is happening right now with home care agencies all around is that there aren't any aides, you keep hearing it, but our program, we have all of our own home care aides that work for Beacon of Life, and they're able to help out with whatever our participants need. We have our gym, so we have full-time physical and occupational therapists there. If you needed therapy, you would either come to our gym, and also all of the services that we have are available, are available within the home. So if somebody doesn't want to come out, we could have the doctors go out there, the nurses go out there. We'd prefer if they could come in at least for their physical once every six months or for sick visits as needed. Um, but if they are unable to make it out, we have a Beacon at Home program where we'd be able to service them within the home as well. Um, and then our social workers, like I was saying before, they do a phenomenal job at helping our participants with pretty much everything else. They do all the odds and ends. We have an LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker that does one-to-one -one counseling for our participants. So it's, like I said, it's a needs-based program. So what you need, you get it from us. Okay, we also would do um, Medicaid application assistance. We have a lot of people that are interested in our program, but they don't have Medicaid, but they qualify for Medicaid. So we will do those applications with them and we don't charge for that at all. Additionally, once participants are in our program, we will do their renewals for them each year to make sure that they continue to keep their Medicaid and there's no lapse in coverage. Um, if somebody did get to a point where they needed placement into either assisted living or a nursing home and we were no longer able to keep them living safely at home with our services, that is something that we do as well. We would assist them with that process. So we have a safety net of different services. It, not everyone's gonna get all of the services that we have right away, but it's there if they need it. And you don't have to rush in an emergency situation to put it in place. Um, we have, offer respite care, so if a family member's going on vacation, we can put somebody for a, a week or so in a place where they can be monitored while their family member is away. And then we also provide dental care, dentures, hearing aids, glasses, um, podiatry, other specialty services. You name it, we have it. Head to toe, we can take care of it. So it's an integrated system of managed care. So we have one hand, we're the provider. So we are doing all of the care and providing all of these services to our participants. And on the other hand, we're the insurance company. So it's a very unique model. So we have an interdisciplinary team of 11 members. They meet every morning, and they're the ones that are taking care of our participants, but they're also the ones making the decisions. So I know it's, I see your face with the insurance. <laughs> we get a lot of questions about the insurance part of it. So we don't have the typical limitations that medic, traditional Medicare and Medicaid have usually as far as our insurance goes, because if our team knows that that's something that's needed to keep you safe, to keep you avoid a hospitalization, they're gonna put it into place for you. I always use this example. We had a gentleman who had really bad COPD in the summertime. You know, he had his inhaler, he had his oxygen, he had everything he needed. And then someone around that table of our interdisciplinary team said, well, does he have air conditioning? It's very hot right now. And sure enough, the man did not have air conditioning. So we paid 
for an air conditioning unit to be put mm -hmm. into that gentleman's home because that is what kept him safe and healthy and at home. Um, so that's not something that would typically be covered under regular insurance. So we also have a network just like any other insurance company. We have a network of specialists and other doctors that we work with. So we would stay in network when somebody enrolls in our program, they would stay in network with the doctors that we work with because they know our program best. And the way that we can keep people safe is by knowing everything that's going on with them from one doctor to the next and we have that communication amongst our team. Okay. And then Pace, the Pace Center is the hub, but we do treat people all over within Monmouth County. And this is just a little visual of our IDT team, our interdisciplinary team, with the participant, of course, being the main focal point. And the interesting thing about our program that is so hard for people to grasp is that each team member has equal amount of say of what goes on with our participants. So we're not looking at it just from a medical perspective or just from a social work perspective or a physical therapist. The whole team is getting together and they're talking about that participant and what their needs are. So someone might not have picked up on something that the social worker saw. So in that meeting, they can coordinate together to come up with the best possible care plan for our particip participants. Excuse me. So who pays for it? Medicare and Medicaid will cover the program at 100% or just straight Medicaid will cover it at 100%. There is also an option to pay out of pocket and do what's called a Medicaid spend down for people that do have private funds. And, um, so that's an option as well. We don't take anybody's income, whereas if they went to a facility, their income would be due to the facility. So this is a private pay comparison that we go through because once people hear, you know, we're close to $6,000 a month, they say, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't possibly afford $6,000 a month. So an average cost of a nursing home in New Jersey is around 15000 a month on the generous side. Um, same with assisted living, it's more than $8,000 a month and over $10,000 a month for a live-in home health aid. So for our program, you know, we, don't, we also don't require a two-year spend down like a lot of facilities do. Um, if you went to like an assisted living facility, they might say you have to spend privately for two years and then you could go on to Medicaid. We don't have anything like that. If you can apply for Medicaid and you get Medicaid and you have, you know, that in place, then we could have you in our program. If somebody wanted to spend down with us, once they got to the point where they've spent down, we will do the application for them when it's time. Um, and then again, we don't touch your income um, because our participants are living within the community. So this is enrollment information. Since we are also the insurance company, we can only enroll the first of every month. Now for our, our enrollment process includes reaching out to one of us in the enrollment team and we would do an intake. We would get consent forms from you, make sure we could get all your medical records and consent to do the assessments. Then we have our nurse go out to do a level of care assessment and she's certified by the state of New Jersey to determine whether or not somebody is qualified for the program. Then we have our occupational therapist go out and she'll do a home safety assessment. So that's to determine if the safety within the community. With PACE services, are, are you safe to remain living in the community? Um, she'll also look to see, is there any medical equipment that might need to be put in place, any home modifications? Those are all things that we would look at also, and th those are things that we would cover if needed. So the rest of our IDT members, once somebody is kind of on the way to moving forward with enrollment, we do center assessments, which is everybody else does their own part, and then they all get together and they come up with a care plan. And the care plan is individualized, catered to that one person and specifically what their needs are. And then we do all of the fun paperwork, the enrollment paperwork. It has to be completed and submitted to Medicaid by the 25th of the month in order to enroll for the first of the following month. If somebody is paying privately, they have up until the last day of the month to complete the paperwork and the assessments. Once everyone is enrolled and they're starting, it's the first of the month, 
then they'll be oriented into Beacon of Life. They have an orientation process they go through. They meet with you know other participants to see what it's like and kind of get more information about how the program works once they're in it. This is Tova. She is our facility dog, so she works there. <laughs> She's a very good employee. She's there every day, and she really brings a smile to our participants' face. Um, so I welcome you to come visit Tova and all of us at Beacon of Life. And this is our two-minute animated video. So I know it's it's a lot of information going through, you know, Beacon of Life and what is it and how does it work? And sometimes it's just kind of like you get a little bit of it, right? So I think this video does a really good job of explaining exactly what the process is and how it works. If you ever have anybody that has questions, you could show them this video. It's, it's fast, it's simple, it's easy. So can I do this from here? Yeah, let's see if we can get this to work here. Uh, it might be. I think it's the one, the one on the end, to the right. If you want to just click on the browser, that yeah, and minimize the power. Um. We can go back to my, I can go back to my email if you want to get it that way. It was there. <laughs> well, while we're trying to figure this technical difficulties out, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I spent a lot of time talking about uh, Medicaid. Uh, you did mention being for Medicare. So if someone is Medicaid but not Medicaid qualified, the application process is still the same for them? Yes, so we would still complete the intake. Everything would be the same other than they would um, have to just pay out of pocket until they were able to apply for Medicaid. Oh, so a Medicare, so Medicare isn't funding it. Right. You have to be Medicaid eligible. To right. That. There's a portion of it comes from Medicaid, but not not very much. The the six thousand uh, around fifty nine hundred. What is it? Fifty nine thirteen or something like that. That comes from Medicaid. So that's what the people would be paying out of pocket for the Medicaid portion of it. Can you do sound? Yes. Be able to get the sound. Well, it's on the link okay. um, address is in your PowerPoint if you wanted to look at it on your own time. Um, so you could probably type in the search bar beacon of life. Um, but basically, I guess the, the take home from this presentation would be if you know anybody that's living in the community that needs some help at home, this is a really good option for them because you don't really want to wait until somebody's at the point where they're like borderline gonna end up in the nursing home they're back and forth from the hospital like that's a good person too that you could refer but we like to provide preventative care and make sure that we keep people in home and providing them quality of life within their home so, so No, so since we're an all-inclusive program, you enroll with the whole program, so we don't have like a la carte services. If you don't need all of the services, then certainly you'd only get the ones that you needed. So say you needed physical therapy and home care, then that's what would be on your care plan. And then down the line, if you needed something else, then we would put something else into place for you. But you wouldn't be able to have our home care and go to therapy with like the VNA or something or use a different doctor. You'd have to be a part of the whole program. And really, the idea of that is to just 
best manage your healthcare needs. I know it's something that comes up a lot or, you know, people are, don't want to change their doctors. I've had the same doctor for 20 years. They saved my life. You have to think of it as what's going to benefit you the most for when you really truly need the help because once people get to a point where they are nursing home appropriate they're going to lose their doctors anyway and then they kind of lose their chance to be at home when they could have enrolled in our program and had all this preventative care and had a whole team of individuals taking care of what their needs are while they're still at home because we want to keep people living where they thrive so do you have a list of those options we do have a list that's something if um, I could maybe send it to Lisa or if you wanted to, if you have an email, you could put your email on the sign up sheet. I could send it to you, but they're mostly within Monmouth County. Uh, a lot of people already have them as their doctors. So it's usually not, it's a seamless transition. As far as primary care physicians go, we have our own. We have a medical director and nurse practitioners that work in our clinic. So we would manage your primary care and then any kind of specialist you might need, we may already have a contract with. So, let's see, you have, I think you mentioned some of the, uh, um, you have 275 plus participants. So, I guess those, most of those, uh, they are all um, Medicaid patients. Not all of them. We do have a handful of people that do pay out of pocket for the program, um, but the majority of our participants are on Medicaid. So is the paying out of pocket including the approximate cost? Is that the 5000 yeah, Yep, it's a little under 6000 a month. But yeah. like I was saying before, if someone qualifies, and maybe they don't know that they qualify, if they qualify for Medicaid, we'll go through that process with them yeah. and we'll apply for them. And it takes, unfortunately, it takes a couple of months um, for Medicaid to go through and to get all of the documents and everything. But we do that as a free service for anybody that wants to be in our program. So, so what, how big a staff do you have? We have a lot of staff. We have about 130 employees. So we've got a lot of people that work there. There's a, our buildings, Pretty full. Not all of those 225 people come every day. It's probably around like 70 to 80 people a day that are coming in, our participants. Um, but we service 225 participants within Monmouth County so far. And it's just growing and growing because the more the word gets out there and the more now you're going to go tell all your friends about this great program and everyone's going to want to enroll for October 1st. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Yeah, what? You said the current cost is five thousand, whatever. Mm -hmm. And when was the last time you raised your your, your cost? It was just recently that it went up. It goes up with what the state does with Medicaid. However, the Medicaid cost goes up. So once we hear from the state, we go based off of that. And, and again, Medicare doesn't fund any of that. A portion. small portion. They don't fund any of the fifty-nine. Yeah, Medicare doesn't, when it comes to long-term services, Medicare doesn't cover much. So this is like the type of Medicaid that we take for our program. That's the type of Medicaid you need to go to a nursing home. So it, it's called MLTSS or Managed Long-Term Support Services. So that's like adult Medicaid. So when somebody qualifies clinically and financially, then they could get MLTSS. And the income requirement for MLTSS is a lot higher than it is for community Medicaid. So it's around 25, 32 per month is the income limit. And then if you make under that, even if you make a little bit over that, there are ways. So there's something, we can maybe do a, another presentation another time on Medicaid. Um, we can come back and do something on who qualifies for Medicaid, how to apply for Medicaid and the different steps. I also, on our little table over there, I have some Medicaid checklists that shows you what exactly they're looking for. Um, but if you make under that amount and you qualify clinically and, you know, they look for five years of bank statements and all these different things, then you could potentially get Medicaid. And then if you make a little bit over, there's something called a qualified income trust where you would kind of just put that extra income to put you under the Medicaid limit. 
So there's a lot of different ways around it. That's why we have a Medicaid specialist on our team that would go through all of that with you or your, whoever you know that might be interested in the program. And we always recommend getting that process started sooner rather than later because it does take a little bit of time. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Very comprehensive presentation. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. Thanks for having me and thank you for coming. You, you can always reach out to me and you're welcome. Anyone is welcome to come for a tour at any time. We welcome you to come in. We also have what's called a day in the life. You can come, no strings attached, just come in for the day as a participant, do the activities, get your breakfast and lunch, and enjoy the day. Just kind of see what's, what it's like, because you know I can sit up here and show you a PowerPoint and explain everything, but until you come into the center and see it for yourself, you can't really comprehend how we do all of this and how we're keeping people safe in the community. So once you come in and see the center, it's a whole different presentation almost. <laughs> Yes, 100 and it's around 130, but that is also growing every month. So we are recruiting actively for all positions pretty much, especially drivers and uh, bus escorts and home health aides because every month we have more participants enrolling in the program. So we do need to be able to keep up with the amount of people we're bringing in. So we're constantly hiring. So if you know of anybody that's looking for employment, then also please feel free to reach out to us. There's a very big shortage. Yeah, yeah. I know, we were just talking about that in the beginning, right? How MLTSS, they also provide like home care services through MLTSS, but the problem is people are getting their, I don't know, 21 hours a week, but they can't find an aid to actually do the 21 hours a week. Whereas with Beacon, we have our aides and they're doing their task-oriented home care and we also have the day center too. So that kind of offsets the, the staffing shortages that are going you know, on throughout Monmouth and Ocean County. Really, everywhere is an issue, but we're responsible for our participants 24 seven. So we're finding a way to make things work for them, no matter what. So it's our responsibility. So that doesn't include voucher As far as what? Oh, the 130 employees. No, no they're included because our doctors are our employees as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And we do have contracted agencies for different things. Whatever we don't have in-house, we do contract and outsource whenever needed. So if it's something we can't provide within our walls of Beacon, then we will get it for you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thanks Thank for having you, us. And please come by anytime and call me if you need anything or if you have somebody that you know think would benefit from our services or you think maybe just would want some more information for someone they know, just give me a call. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.